<clears throat> ah, you are here. Welcome, welcome. I have been eagerly awaiting your arrival. Allow me to introduce myself. I am the storyteller. Pleased to make your acquaintance. I shall be your guide going forward. Now then, before we begin our story, there are several things I must bring to your attention. First, this game uses autosave. The game will automatically save at regular intervals, so you may stop playing at any time. Saving is a very important element of games. It is the only way to keep your memories in place. If you do not wish to rely on autosave alone, you can also save manually via the menu. Next, please look at the upper right screen. Upper right of the screen, that is the menu button. Oh, so I can already do this here. Interesting, interesting, okay, okay, okay. From here, you can check the text log, view useful files, and switch auto mode on and off. You can also adjust the brightness, volume, and other settings in the options menu. For instance, if there is a voice you prefer not to hear, you can mute it by setting the voice volume to zero. I feel like that's definitely there for a reason. I suggest you check the brightness, controls, and other settings now before going on. Okay, sure. Alright. Let me see. I think we're good on this. What the hell is chromatic aberration? I don't know what that is. I'm gonna keep it on for now. I think they should be good. Um, I've turned down the audio in OBS just so it's not too freaking loud. Because I don't want it to overtake my, vo my voice. Not that it, I don't think it'll matter too much because I do have it so that my voice is very high. But just to be safe. Now control, auto play, okay. The elder use cursed. Okay. Gotcha. I will explain other essential functions when the time is right. Ah, oh, there is one more thing I wish to confirm before we continue. It would feel strange to go on without knowing your name. Please, tell me what I may call you. Uh, sure. La 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 la... Beat. No, no, not with two T's. I see. <laughs> Okay, 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 I see, I see, I see. So, okay, 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 okay. I'll explain this a little bit. No. Oh, how rude of me. Please, pardon my mistake. I was sure that's what you said, but it seemed I was wrong. What came over me? Let me try again. You used to be called Beat, yes. I see, very good. I seem to have gotten it right this time. All right. Now that we've been properly introduced, let us begin our story. <clears throat> From antiquity to present day, regardless of how society and civilization evolve, death has become bleh, death has been a constant presence that none have ever escaped. Whether it is oh look at that presented by beat, whether it is one's own or that of someone close, death is always a difficult thing to accept. This is an immutable reality, a value shared by all, no matter the age in which they live. In fact, oral traditions reflecting people's fears and prayers regarding death still remain. Ghosts, spirits, and so on. Similarly, in an attempt to defy death, many curses, rituals, and customs have been born from burning spirit incense to summoning the souls of the dead. Some of those secret arts are still being passed down to this day. Ah, on that note, Beat, 
This may seem rather abrupt, but... Is there someone you wish to bring back from the dead? Oh, what if? What if you had one chance to use the secret art of resurrecting the dead? I'd rather not. I'll be honest with you. I'd rather not. Like, circle of life, man. Things happen for a reason. I'm not. I'm not messing with that. I don't. I don't like messing with that, bro. I believe in that. In the supernatural and all that stuff. I definitely do believe in that. So I do not want to mess with that crap. Yes. If you had the power to bring someone back to life one time and one time only. Nope. What would you do, Beat? Use the direction buttons to make your choice. I'd use it even if I had to sacrifice myself. I'd use it even if I had to sacrifice someone. I'd use it if it came with no cost. I wouldn't want it. Let someone else have it. I see. Very interesting. Yes, yes. That's what I thought I, you would say. Is it? You thought I would say no? Interesting. Hmm? What seems to be the matter? What do you mean? Oh, we got a TV. Ah! You want to know what this box that has been sitting here is? It's quite the curious thing, isn't it? This is called a color television. The world I will be sending you to is full of such devices, such as this, that do not exist in the age you are from. In this era, a color television can be found in nearly every household. That is not all. For example, if a person should wish to contact someone while they are out of their home, they use public telephones like this that can be found all over the city. Can you imagine what life would be like in such a time? I'd be thrilled to have you continue this story, Beat. After all, that is why you came here, no? So let us begin. I have kept you waiting long enough. Kept you waiting, huh? I present to you Paranormal Sight, a bizarre tale surrounding the curse known as the Rite of Resurrection. A peculiar yarn ensnaring nine men and women in a fierce fight for their lives as it unravels. Some of the characters appearing within surely share your views on the Rite of Resurrection. I imagine those who have lost someone dear to them will feel particularly strongly about it, clinging to it as their last desperate hope. The first I shall introduce, a man named Shogo Oki, is one of them. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Oh gosh, okay, hold on. I'm Google Translate! Okia Shogo? Okia. Okia Shogo. Shogo Okia. Okia Shogo. It's one of them. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. Okia Shogo. Shogo Okia. Right? Okia. Shogo Okia. Sex male office worker. Shogo is an unremarkable young man entering his third year of working in the planning department at Hihaku Soaps, a chemicals company headquartered in Sumida. Born in Tokyo, oops, sorry, to an ordinary family around the same, uh, same time as the birth of color TV, he grew up amidst the boom of special effects heavy action films, anime, variety shows, professional baseball, and pop music. Shogo, Shogo graduated from a famous private university in Tokyo and has since settled into an apolitical mindset common among those of his generation with no strong ideals and no particular dissatisfaction with the world as it develops around him. He is content to just go with the flow, having stumbled into his current position by pure chance and it is safe to assume he will follow the stereotypical path of working his way up the ladder, starting a family, and renaming Oh, sorry, and remaining at the same company until retirement. He plays full guitar as a hobby and is currently looking for a girlfriend. And the storyteller. The storyteller guides those who visit Paranormal Site. Everything else about him remains a mystery. Breaking news. Oh, I wonder what it could be at such a time. Early this morning, the body of a drowned man was discovered at the park in Sumida City. Police have identified the body as Shogo Okie, a 25-year-old man who worked at a company in the area. As signs of a struggle were found, the Sumida police suspect foul play 
and have launched an investigation. Oh, hello. Oh, excuse me. Please pay no mind to what you have just seen. Goodness, you very nearly saw something that would have spoiled the story. Just pretend you did not see that. Let us turn back time back a smidge. Yeah, let us turn back time back a smidge and start again from there. Do you understand? You saw nothing. You know nothing. You are nothing. The story is a work of fiction. All locations, characters, organizations, legends, etc. that appear in this game have no relation to reality. Cool. Do I have to press A? No. Square Enix presents. Jogo. Jogo. Are you alright? Hey, can you hear me? Hmm. Huh? Hey, that's not a proper answer. Where's the show go, Okie? What do you think you're doing falling asleep here? You gave me quite the shock. Come on now. Up with you. Up. Okay. And the show. There! How's that? Alright? Do you feel dizzy? Have a headache? Are your humors off balance? What does that even mean? I'm fine. I think. There's definitely nothing wrong with my humors. Though my head's still a little fuzzy. Office worker, Shogo Okie. Okay. Uh-oh. That doesn't sound good. Turn your head around a little bit to see if you can walk all right. When the game is in your control, use the right stick or swipe the screen with two fingers to look around. Try looking around your surroundings now. I cannot do that as the switch is in the dock. So I will use the right stick instead. Okay. Wow, what an introduction, huh? Here, what to do, ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy B. Welcome to Paranormal Sight for the Switch. This game came out, uh, damn, uh, let me see, actually. This game came out last year. The Paranormal Site, The Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. A visual novel that released last year that was apparently in the Japanese Nintendo Switch Direct. But, uh, it did not get any coverage in one of the directs last year. Uh, I don't, I don't remember which direct it was exactly that it showed, but they never had to talk about it in the US Direct. So, honestly, this game... Other than Nico B's Let's Play, I have heard or seen nor, you know, anything about this game at all. In fact, Nico is the reason why I even wanted to play this game in the first place, because I watched his Let's Play, even though I've seen a bit about a bit of it like last year, around the time where he started uploading this. It didn't really interest me then. This year, for whatever reason though, when I was working, I was just putting on the Let's Play while I was walking around doing my job. And the story and everything hooked me, like, instantly, and I immediately bought it. And now we're playing it, because I, I was going to play this or another game, but I was thought, you know what? Because I didn't finish this, let's play. Why don't I go ahead and just go through the story myself so I know what the hell's going on? Because I want to know what's going on. Also, this is a great time for me to be able to begin my journey into the fall. And playing a lot of games like this. Whether they be visual novels, horror games, stuff like that. Because this is a horror visual novel. And the fact that this is made by Square Enix is kind of crazy. So, this game, I hope there's a sequel for it. Because from what I've seen and heard from the Let's Play, this game is fantastic. But I know there's supposed to be a manga coming out next year in 2025. So, hopefully that does well too. But anyways, let's look around. Hmm. Pretty dark. Must be late night type stuff. I hate that because I knew that was happening and it still got me. I hate that. I got that really got me. Wow. Wow, that was <laughs> Oh god. Good, good. You seem to be fine. What a relief. Just letting you know there's gonna be a lot of moments like that in this game, so just be fair. Why did you get so close? Do you remember anything? Like where we are or what we were doing? 
Uh, the Rite of Resurrection? Huh? Wait a second. When did I tell you about that? Oh, excuse me. I mean, I guess I must have, seeing as you know the name, but... Weird. Anyway, you still seem a little out of it. Why don't you look around a bit more? You better not do what you did, I swear. Look around and select things you want to investigate. You can converse with people by selecting their faces. Okay. La la la, la 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 la. What's with the surroundings? Hmm. Where are we? Oh, right. This is Sumida City, Tokyo. We're in Kinishibori Park near Kinishicho. Kin Kinshicho. Kinshicho, yeah? Kinshicho Station. Yoko brought me here saying she needed my help with something important. It's just past midnight. That, explain what, that explains why there's nobody else around. Also, I kind of wanted to get into my visual novel bag. I don't know. I guess because I really want to finish up and get through all Danganronpa before the new game comes out. If it was not Danganronpa. But you get what I mean. So, Meida City, Tokyo. One of the 23 districts of Tokyo. Located in the eastern part of the city. It is surrounded by the Sumida, Arakawa, and Hiyunaka rivers. At the start of the Showa era, the area was still divided into two districts, the southern Honjo and northern Mukojima. But they were, I hope I'm saying, I, I really do hope I'm saying these right. But they were merged into one district after the Second World War. It is said to be named after the Sumida River and the banks that, uh, that line it. Unlike the river, however, its name uses the character for ink rather that than for corner. Even now, people are frequently mixing up the two. Whatever. Despite suffering excessive damage from both the Great Kanto earthquake and air bombings during the war, Tumida managed to recover and come out on top every time. Once filled with samurai residences, it is now home to a thriving industrial district and many residential zones. Though evidence of its previous character can still be found all around the area. Major landmarks, tourist attractions, Echo Temple, former Yasuda Gardens, site of Kira Kozu Kenosuke's residence, Honjo Matsu Matsuzakcho. Oh, okay. Matsuzakacho Park. I, was, I don't know if I said that right. Sumida Park, Tokyo Metropolitan Memorial Hall, Mukojima, Hyakken, hey, Kain Gardens. I hope I said it right too. Okay. Kinishibori Park. Opened 1950. Conveniently close to Kinshicho Station and surrounded on all sides by roads, this paved park is a popular spot for people to meet or relax. Kinshibori Park was named after the Kinshibori Canal, part of the South Baregistui Canal, which could once be found nearby. In fact, the area's name Kinshicho was also derived from the canal. Okay. So that's it for now. Okay. What else can we surmise from here? Oh, telephone booth. These telephone booths are low. Oh, yeah. One more time. These telephone booths are all over town. The lights are always on so they can be used in an emergency. Telephone booth. A small booth containing a public telephone. Most often found in parks or along roads. Local telephone calls can be placed at a rate of 10 yen per 3 minutes. More recently, telephone booths capable of accepting prepaid cards, known as a telephone cards. Sorry. Known as a telephone cards. More recently, telephone booths capable of accepting prepaid cards, known as telephone cards, have begun to spread, enabling one to make a phone call without the need for small change. The telephone booths in the downtown area tend to be plastered with unauthorized advertisements and leaflets, a problem that has shown no signs of slowing down. Gotcha, gotcha. What else can we look at? Recall. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, playground. That's an interesting looking playground. I bet it's crawling with kids during the daytime, but it's kind of peaceful here at night. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, good. You didn't do anything. So there's... Is there nothing else? Low-key, I kind of wish there was a button like in Dongarboba. Where you can just hit, um, try to see if you've seen all the areas here. But, uh, that wouldn't be right. I guess in this type of game. Yoko? That's Yoko Fukunaga. Good. At least I can remember that much. I first met her about a month ago. She's 23, works as a housekeeper, and is really into the occult. If I think harder, I could probably recall a little more about what's going on. We only met a few times, but we've really hit it off. She's a lot of fun to be around. You saw the yellow outline on her call, right? It's important! I have no idea how she feels, though. I get the sense she isn't thinking about me that way right now. But I know I've got a thing for bubbly girls who are into dark things like the occult. Do you actually, or are you just saying that? Paranormal fanatic, Yoko Fukunaga. You know, hold on. Let me, let me, let me look this up. Am I saying this right? I just want to make sure. Okia Shogo. Okia Shogo. Okay, and then how about Yoko Fukunaga? Fukunaga. Wait. Yoko Fukunaga. Fukunaga Yoko. Okay. Female housekeeper. After obtaining a jeweler, a junior, after obtaining a junior college degree. Yoko student started working as a housekeeper. Housekeeping, housekeeping, housekeeping. Due to her ability to see things other due to her ability to see things others cannot, she has received strange looks from a young age. This ability spurred an interest in the paranormal, which she continues to pursue to this day. Following graduation, Yoko worked a desk job at a trading company, but butted heads with her supervisor, one who was skeptical of the supernatural and quit within a year. Now, while working as a housekeeper, she spends her days devouring ma me 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 me. She spends her days devouring mystery magazines and visiting haunted spots. As she vowed to live her life true to herself and never change for the sake of others, Yoko has no regrets about the path she has taken. Yoko has a dog, a Shiba Inu named Ogopoko, who has been by her side since she was a student. Since she was a student. I'm going to turn up the game volume for you guys on OBS to 5. Hopefully that's A-OK, -okay, but we'll see what happens in the in the editing process. And if I need to put it back to 6, then dope. But if not, cool. Okay. Recall, huh? Let me think. What can I remember? Okay. Her name is Yoko Fukunaga. Oh, Yoko Fukunaga. We met about a month ago. What's the deal with this park? It was around noon on one of my days off. I had just finished running some errands in Kinish Kinshito and was here taking a quick break. I was just looking around absentmindedly. Oh, 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 oh. When I noticed this girl loitering about. She was digging up holes in the sandbox and searching around the playground. She seemed to be enjoying herself, talking to the animal figures and petting them on their heads. My curiosity got the better of me before long, and I struck up a conversation. Hey, are you looking for something? Huh? Ah, oh, sorry, I must look look nah, blah, blah, blah. I must look like a total weirdo. I guess you could say- Oh, sorry, I'm peeking. I'm peeking the audio. Um, yeah. I guess you could say I'm looking for something. If you want, I could give you a hand. Really? I mean, that'd be a huge help. But- But? Are you really just a good Samaritan? Or are you after, you know, something else? Huh? <laughs> Definitely the other thing is crazy. I don't even know you. Maybe if we knew each other, but honestly, I don't even know you. I'd like to get you get that. Yeah, I can't even speak. I'd like to take you to dinner first, at least, or just like go on a date. Bowling alley? See a movie? 
try to get to know you first before I just go ahead and dive in. Oh my gosh, she... Oh wow, my hero. People like you really do exist. I think I might cry. Just shut up, bro. That... Okay, I guess I'll let you help me. Be warned, you might regret what you've got yourself into. No worries. What are you looking for, anyway? Did you lose a bracelet or something? Not exactly. I'm searching for one of the seven mysteries. Supposedly, this is the location of the Whispering Canal. The what? Now I've done it. I bet you think I'm some kind of lunatic. The seven mysteries of Hanjo. Do you know anything about it? I figured everyone around here would have at least heard of it. But I guess not. Hanjo is what the southern part of Sumida is called. A long time ago, this part of Tokyo was split into two separate cities. The north part was Mukojima, and the south part was Honjo. Huh. Ah, am I boring you? Well, I'm not a local or anything. I just work around here. Oh, then no wonder you didn't know. Well, the seven mysteries of Honjo is a legend dating all the way back to the Edo period. Really? It's that old? That's like over 200 years ago. Oh, I've got your attention after all. I just assumed it was one of those fake stories made up to chase the cult craze. Haha, <laughs> I don't blame you. A lot of the popular stories going around are pretty fishy. But the seven mysteries of Hanjo are different because they're all true. They're true? That's what I said. They're the real deal. So, hold on. What does that mean? Are you telling me there's actually paranormal stuff at work in this park? Yep, pretty much. But there's gotta be more to it. After all I've done, I still haven't found any- I still haven't found a thing. That was the first time I met Yo Yoko Fukunaga. It probably sounds so, like, weird when I say the way that it, I don't know. Ooh. Sorry about that. Honjo. A location in the southern part of modern Sumida City. It consisted mostly of swamplands until the middle of the Edo period. While it wasn't originally considered part of the city of Edo itself, the area on the eastern side of the Sumida River began to de to be developed once the Ryogoku Bridge was built after the Great Fire of Merike. While Honjo was known for its large number of rivers and canals, many of these were dug during the era's urbanization for drainage and sewage. The Ryogoku Bridge area, home of the home to the Echo Temple, eventually became filled with both people and shops. After a magistrate was assigned to the area and shops continued to pop up, it soon became a part of Edo proper as its reputation as a lively place spread. Honjo, along with other areas like Asakusa and Fukukawa, are still appreciated today for their old-fashioned feel and architecture. Occult Craze Paranormal Phenomena The Supernatural Aliens Cryptids Lost Civilizations ESP The list goes on. Such unexplainable phenomena are quick to take on a life of their own. A plesiosaur named Nessie, living in Loch Ness. Sightings of mythical creatures like the Tsuchinoko or Hippogon. The urban legend of the Kuchisake Onna. Television reports of spoon bedding physics, psychics. Documentaries which feature mediums and spirit photography. These are only a few examples of stories that have captivated the public. There is no end to this obsession in sight, with magazines on paranormal phenomena enjoying widespread publication. Most recently, rumors of an ancient itch, uh, ancient ritual, ancient ritual no, blah. sorry, most recently, rumors of an ancient ritual known as the Rite of Resurrection have been spreading in certain circles. The Whispering Canal, an enduring superstition, formerly known as Kinshibori, Many fishermen once gathered on the section of the canal that ran through Honjo. 
As their days came to a close and the fishermen gathered up their catches, a terrifying voice would rise up from the canal, whispering, Leave it behind. Leave it behind. Leave it behind. Those who ignored the voice found themselves unable to move and their previously full baskets of fish emptied. They would then be dragged into the canal, never to return. This strange phenomenon continued to occur, and the people began to call this body of water the Whispering Canal. The Seven Mysteries of Hanjo Hanjo became known as a hotspot for strange happenings during the Edo period. A number of these stories have survived to this day and become known as the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. While many of these were likely the result of people blaming things they didn't understand on spirits or monsters, the stories continue to be told as urban legends. Despite what the name would imply, there are actually more than 10 of these strange tales. Their roots likely come from that. Their, likes, their roots likely come from stories told by the city's common folk. The most famous of the stories is the Whispering Canal, which eventually became the basis for both an idiom and a well-known Rakugo story. The most famous of the seven mysteries, the Whispering Canal, the Fir Fool's Procession, the Beckoning Light, the Haunting Clappers, the Evergreen Beach, the Taiko Sugaru, the Foot Washing Mansion, the One Sided Reed, and the Ever Burning Lantern. That's nine. There's more than ten, actually. But these are the most famous. That's important! We exchanged contact information, and we've talked on the phone a few times since. We've even met in person once or twice. But she never brought up the seven mysteries of Hanjo again. I figured she got bored of it. Apparently not. I give me a quick sec. I'm gonna take a little bit of a break for my voice. And also to check on laundry. Okay. Until today, when all of a sudden she decided to resume her search. Huh? Wait a second. Where did Yoko go? According to Yoko, the Whispering Canal, one of the seven mysteries of Honjo, is around here somewhere. It's apparently the story that the expression left at the canal originally comes from. It's apparently the story that the expression left at the canal originally comes from. I think I left myself a note about it. I should check my files. I've already read it. Thanks, though. Is there anything else before I go ahead and I look at Yoko? No, it doesn't look good. Okay. There she is. She's back to digging up holes in the sandbox and searching around the playground. She seems to be enjoying herself, talking to the animal figures and petting them on their heads again. No animal needs that much petting. Man, this is creepy. Okay, Yoko. Nope. That's not what I... That's not what I meant. But I don't need to check the files, yeah? No. I just want to make sure. Jeez, he's still at it. Oh. That's right. She asked me to come here to help her look for one of the seven mysteries. Actually, I think I did some research into the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. I can't remember all too well. Let's check my files. Oh. Oh my gosh. Oh no. <laughs> the Fool's Procession, an enduring superstition, a mysterious tale regaling an encounter had by a daimyo uh, at, this, at his residence in Honjo's Ushijima, now Komogara High School. When walking around his estate, he heard the sound of music, much like that of a Kagura performance. He commanded his, his people to find the source, but no matter how much they searched, the music would fade when one neared the Barigisui Canal. Uh, the source of the sound was never located. This story is also known as the Procession of the Tanuki, as many were of the belief that it must have been these mischievous tricksters behind it all. 
beckoning light, and enduring superstition. While walking along the road near Ho Onzi at night, one might spot a hazy lantern light up ahead, despite there being no one around. Following it will cause it to go out suddenly when getting near. But just when one fears the darkness might swallow them up, another light will appear further ahead as if guiding the one who sees it. Some say the flame is benevolent, leading people to their homes, while others believe it is a monster leading people astray. Some even believe it's the vengeful spirit of someone that died, luring the lost to the land of the dead. The haunting clappers, an enduring superstition. As the evening bell rings in Okay. Irieto. 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 Near present day Sumoku Bridge, a night watchman patrols the dark streets and announces his presence by shouting warnings about fires, all the while striking his wooden clappers. But tonight, the sound of another set of clappers answers back. He curiously claps his clappers ag together again. Clack, clack. The echo answers again. But no matter how hard he searches for the source of the second pair of clappers, he never finds it. Some say it was the work of a mischievous tanuki or kitsune, while others say it was a warning from the spirit of someone who lost their life in a terrible fire. The Evergreen Beach Once upon a time in North Okurabashi, a beautiful beech tree stood in the garden of Lord Chinden's residence, now known as the former Yasuda Gardens. It was so impressive that the house became known among the people as the beach residence. Somehow, no one had ever seen a single leaf fall from the tree. As rumors spread of the eternal, eternally green tree, it became known as the evergreen beach. However, this particular species of tree was actually an evergreen, though the lack of fallen leaves was nothing out of the ordinary. This had led people to say that the strangest part of this legend is the fact that it even became a legend at all. The Taiko of Sugaru. Sugaru. Okay. So I was right on that one. Sugaru. Kind of. There was once a daimyo from the Hirosaki domain in Sugaru who built a residence in Midoricho on a large piece of land. On this estate was almost an 8 meter tall tower that served as a lookout for fires. Only a designated firefighter was allowed to use the large drum that resided atop the tower in the event of a fire. Well, most towers use wooden blocks to sound a fire alarm. For some reason, this residence was permitted to use drums. The residence and its special privileges led to much speculation and gossip among the townsfolk. The Foot Washing Mansion This is a story of something that occurred in the dead of night in a residence in Mikasacho, modern day South Oregisui Street in Kamizawa. A foul smelling wind Rattled the house. Suddenly, a giant foot drenched in blood. Ew, look at that thing. Smashed through the ceiling. Wash, it commanded. As the servants carefully washed the foot, it returned from whence it came, fixing the roof it had broken. A man who had been visited by the foot every night asked a friend to trade houses with them. That night, the foot stopped appearing. Oh, interesting. A one sided reed. There was once an infamous rogue by the name of Tomezo who fell for a woman named Okoma. Tomezo persistently chased after Okoma, attempting to win her heart over and over again. <gasps> Excuse me, sorry. But she rejected his, uh, rejected his advances each time. Enraged by her indifference to him, Tomezo brought a dagger to a canal near Ryokoku Bridge and attacked Okoma. He cut the arm and leg off one side of her body, then threw them into the canal. Ever since then, the reeds growing, growing along that canal have only sprouted leaves on one side. Which is insane. That is completely insane. The Ever-Burning Lantern On a bone-chilling winter's night, one may happen upon a soba cart along the canal known as South Warekasui. But there is something strange about this cart. No matter when one might visit, its owner is nowhere to be found. Yet the lantern that hangs from it stays perpetually lit, burning brightly even with no oil to fill it. Should one attempt to put out the flame, it immediately rose, roars back to life. However, there is also the tale of the never burning lantern, another telling of the story in which the silver cart's lantern always remains dark, refusing to be lit. Hmm. 
Hmm. Okay. Okay, I guess we talk to Yoko again. Oh, wait. She's coming back this way. Oh. What do you... Hey. What was that just now? Huh? Didn't you hear that? I honestly I didn't hear it. You're hearing things. No, I didn't hear anything. You sure you didn't just imagine it? Hmm. Maybe I did. But your special talent. You should have been able to hear it. Pay closer attention for me, okay? A special talent? What are you talking about? Huh? I mean your spirit sense. You look like you can handle your liquor. Uh huh? I have no idea what drinking has to do with it, but I don't think so. Hmm? Well, you must. I mean, you can see me, right? What are you talking about? Huh? You're real. What do you mean you can see me, right? What is that, huh? You trying to mess with my brain meats? Don't go look yet. When are you? Hidden she body park. What are you talking about? You can see. It's gotten late. Really late, actually. It's already past 1 a.m. There's a chill in the air. But I guess that's normal for this time of year. Or so I keep telling myself. Can't wait for fall, man. Can't wait. That's an interesting looking playground. I guess that's it. Okay. You. Wait, wait, wait. You're kidding, right? About what? I mean, just now. It kind of sounded like you were saying that only people with spirit sense can see you. Of course that was a joke. Duh! You don't really think I'm some kind of evil spirit, do you? But yeah. There's someone behind us. What the fu- I meant what I said about your spirit sense being strong. I meant you could down a whole gimlet in one gulp. Seriously, that's the real reason I asked you to help me with the seven mysteries of Honjo business. Okay, let me just clarify something. Are you saying you can actually see paranormal stuff? Sure, I can handle a solid Moscow meal. Is this about alcohol or is this about actually seeing supernatural? What is going on? Why are you measuring things this in terms of cocktail? Not a believer, huh? Well, that's no matter. But you have to have seen some weird stuff over the years, right? Why are you getting close? Weird stuff? Yeah, like... Things you could see, but could never understand. You mean like that figure that's behind us? You can't be serious. Buddy, what you want? Huh? Huh? Wait! Nah, 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 nah. There was someone behind me. What the f- Hello? What the f- Nah! Don't play with me. There was someone behind me. What the f- Bruh, okay. I don't know how she's so comfortable talking about spirits and the paranormal at this time of night. Either she's got guts, or she's just used to it. Unless- no, it can't be. No, she's not really a ghost. Okay, I'll be back again. You, we back. I went ahead and I ate. And I made me some tea. So now we back at it. We're gonna get this thing started. Oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. No, we're gonna have to deal with me burping. Apologies. Also, I got tea. So, I'm looking to try to play this for a long time. And I... What the hell are we doing? Um. Oh. I remember. There was someone behind me, but we can't see who it is. Which makes me a little upset. Because they're gone. We're, I don't know what happened, but they're not there no more. Telephone booth again. These telephone booths are all over town. The lights are always on, so they can be used in an emergency. Okay. Anything else, Yoko? Okay. Oh, okay. Let's talk about the spirit sets. I've seen ghost photos in magazines before. But are you telling me they really exist? You bet they do, but you can only recognize them if you really believe in them. 
So be careful. So even with my skill, I won't be able to see them if I doubt they exist. That's right. The spirit world is all about the mind and the soul. You won't be able to see a thing unless you're properly in tune. But sometimes, people get caught up in the moment, thinking they might see something, and then they really do, because they believe they would. Is that how that works? Yep, just like drinking. You'll never know how much booze you can handle unless you're ready to down some shots. I'm still not sure I got the drinking thing. Yeah, me neither. Haha, <laughs> you know, I realized how strange it was as the words left my mouth. Sheesh. I just wanna... Just that feeling, man. Just that feeling that's... That one dude's still there. Hmm. Maybe it is nothing. Bird sense. And if you can believe that, there might be hope for you yet. You can't be serious. Oh, okay. How about... Alcohol. Totally unrelated, but do you actually drink? Real alcohol, I mean. Well, talk about whiplash. I didn't expect you to start making small talk. Sorry. Well, our conversation was getting a bit dark. I figured the change of topic might lighten things up. Oh, I see. If you really want to know, I like to think I can handle a few drinks. But to tell you the truth, I've never actually had a Moscow Mule. According to Nico, it's very good, but I've never drank it. Not that I really drink ever. Really, no. <laughs> I just thought it sounded cool. I would like to try it, though. Why don't we go for a drink sometime, then? Oh? Are you asking me out? No, you're just being a good Samaritan, right? Oh my gosh, so really, either way, it comes back at this point. That's interesting. No, that's not what I meant. Ha, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'd be up for that. If you said the other thing about, um... Pretty much saying that you want to have sex. She brings it up here. That's interesting. I like that. But only if we find one of the seven mysteries. Alright. So let's get to work. Oh. Oh. No, it's just a playground. Okay, never mind. Okay, Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. I just remember, I actually did some research on the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo at the library. You did? What did you find? Well, I discovered a few interesting things. Oh, -ho? tell me everything. Okay, uh, Seven Mysteries. Although they're called the Seven Mysteries, the literature lists nine of them. It lists nine, but there's apparently more than ten. I'm surprised you picked up on that. Nice researching. Some people think there could be up to 15, see? That's the thing about those, these old folk tales. Stuff gets added to them over the years. There's more extra... That's more extra stories than the main ones. Yeah, but the seven mysteries... Rolls off the tongue way better than nine or 15. I'm trying to think of what you would actually use for nine. You know what? What the hell is... A, what's an acronym for mystery? So I meant, I said acronym, I meant synonym. The nine conundrums of Hanjo? The fifteen conundrums of Hanjo? I don't know. Something like that. If you say so. I'm glad that Google d knew that I meant synonym and not acronym, like a dumbo. Thanks Google, you always have my back. Except you don't! But it makes sense, don't you think? It's more likely to be passed on if it's easy to remember. Huh. That's a good point. What about the seven mysteries of Andrew caught your attention? Are these really ghost stories? So, I read some of the stories and none of them were, well, scary. I thought these were supposed to be ghost stories? That's true. They're more like a collection of superstitions, really. But there are, oh wait, but there are some pretty disturbing ones in the mix. Wait. Oh, never mind, I was right. Yeah, like the one that's supposed to take place here, the Whispering Canal. People who fish in this canal would hear a voice out, a voice call out saying, Leave it! Leave it! 
They had to abandon their catch or the canal would take it. Right, right. Is that- Ew, is that what you're expecting to find here in this park? Um, not quite. We're talking about a folklore, a folktale from hundreds of years ago. At the centuries of the telephone game, who knows if it's anything like the original story? So basically, you think the true story of the Whispering Canal might be completely, completely different from what we know. Exactly. I'm sure it is. I mean, weren't you curious? About what? Oh. People from around here have that expression, left at the canal, right? Meaning to abandon someone. This story is where it came from. Except the story being told today is about fish. There is nothing in it about leaving people behind. Now that you mention it, that's true. So you're saying the original story maybe did involve someone being abandoned. That's what I'm trying to find out. Ah, gotcha. One of these times, man, someone's gonna be behind us. Someone's gonna be like, oh! I can feel it. Oh, by the way, were we talking about the rite of resurrection? Oh, your memory is as strong as your tolerance. I'm gonna start calling you Martini Man Shoko. Shoko. Martini Man Shoko. I'm really climbing up the drinks menu, huh? So, you know about it, huh? The rite of resurrection? A magazine ran a feature on it recently. I got practically everyone talking about it. Really? Maybe that's where I heard it. Sure it is. Still, I don't know. It seems a little too far-fetched to be true. Okay. So, the Rite of Resurrection is the forbidden art of bringing back, bringing the dead back to life, concocted by a famous. Oh, why is my voice already going? Holy, holy, hold on, bro. Voice, voice. Eh. Hey. It's the forbidden art of bringing the dead back to life, concocted by a famous unmiyoji. From an ancient age. Rumor has it, an old manuscript containing the containing actual concrete details about the rite was recently discovered. This rumor comes from a presentation given by local historian Hideki Ar Araishi. Okay, hold on. Oh no! Oh, no. Araishi. Araishi. Araishi? Araishi. Hideki Araishi. Hideki Araishi at an academic conference. You sure know a lot about this stuff. That's because I'm secretly in a, a huge occult buff. I don't think it's secretly. I think we all know. Kind of got that. See? Oh. D don't, look de don't look depressed or sad. What? But if a researcher spoke about it at an academic conference, it must have some basis, in fact. Exactly. That's why I believe the Rite of Resurrection is real. I mean... Guy could just be talking nonsense. Could just be a psychopath, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Now I'm starting to believe it, too. Good! Pursuit of the Unknown starts with belief! I got that from Professor... Araishi... Araishi... Araishi himself. Hmm. Files updated, more reading! The Rite of the Resurrection. As indicated by its name, this manuscript holds detailed instructions on how to perform the secret art of reviving the dead. This forbidden ritual is said to have been devised by a once famous Onmyoji. Local researcher Hideki Araishi recently discovered the old manuscript and gave a presentation on it at an academic conference, sending ripples through the field of occult studies. Is that all? Well, it's not even the files, you dummy. Yeah, that's it. Okay, cool. Wait, hang on. I've got another question. What's that? Hmm? Hmm? Oh, wait, that was me? Huh? Oh, do I? Hmm. Wait, hang on. I've got another question. Okay, okay. You mentioned the Rider's Resurrection. Are you looking for that, too? Does it have something to do with the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo? Oh, you're sharp. I could cut my finger on you. To tell the truth, it's actually the other way around. What do you mean? 
Hmm. Well, I started off searching for the Rite of Resurrection. But along the way, I realized that I needed to investigate the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo first. I see. So then... Oh? Huh? Why are you looking for the right? If you're looking into a way to bring someone back from the dead... Oh, excuse me, sorry. Does that mean you've got someone you want to bring back? Uh, you know what? Forget it. It just came to mind, so I thought I'd ask. I didn't mean to pry. Sorry. No, it's fine. I figured I need to tell you at some point. Hmm. It's... Ogopogo. Ogopogo? John Pogo Pogo Pogo. Yeah, I want to bring Ogopogo back to life. He died in an accident about a month ago. Ogopogo... died? Oh, right. Ogopogo was my dog. I had him for eight years. Uh, okay, your dog. Gotcha. You spent a long time together. Losing him must have really must have been really hard for you. Yeah. To be honest, I'm not sure if the right even works on dogs. But as soon as I found out about it, I knew I had to give it a try. I don't think I could forgive myself if I just let the opportunity pass by. Definitely. Now I understand why you feel so strongly about it. Thanks for telling me. I know this must be hard to talk about. Hmm. But you know what? All that led to me meeting you. So at least something good came out of it. No, that doesn't mean I'll stop looking, obviously. Yoko, I'll do everything I can to help you. Yay! I'm so glad to hear that. Let's keep up the hard work then, yeah? Okay, what's that got to do with the seven mysteries, though? Like, my... What's the deal? So, about the connection between this right and the Seven Mysteries. Putting together everything we talked about. My guess is that the original stories behind the Seven Mysteries, the true stories, are they are the key to finding the right of resurrection. And that's why you're here searching for one of them. Do I have that right? Wow, 10 out of 10. You're proving to be quite the capable assistant. Assistant? Hold on, what? Since when was there... This one was I your assistant. Yeah, anyway, this is all just hearsay, but... Some say that what led to the Seven Mysteries coming to be... ...was the Rite of Resurrection itself. Huh? Don't the stories come from the Edo period? I thought the Rite of Resurrection was supposed to be way older than that. Right. It seems that an Omnioji from the Edo period rediscovered the ancient art. No, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. That old manuscript I mentioned with all the details on how to use the right? Apparently, it was written in the Edo period. Oh, right. I never told you its name. The manuscript is called The Record of Fates. Whoa, what a name. And it speculates that the secret of the right is hidden within the seven mysteries of Hanjo. So now... Seven mysteries are the hot new trend. Among who? You know, this whole thing's starting to sound pretty questionable. Come on, remember what I said about the pursuit of the unknown? It starts with belief. Right. Okay. The Record of Fates. An old manuscript from the Edo period written by the sorcerer who recovered the Rite of Resurrection. It is viewed as a priceless and authentic document Due to its detailed account on how to perform the ritual. Ah, God! Oh, that scared me. There's a delay, but gosh, just hearing the just hearing the controller vibrate just scared the crap out of me before I saw the thing on video. Oh, okay. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. Whoa. What the hell? It feels like the air just changed. Hmm. Oh! Yoko? I feel... Eyes on my back. I can't move. Is there... Something behind me? Yoko! Are you okay? Ah! 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 Hey, what's wrong? Stay with me! No! This... This can't be! 
No, no, no. Ah, ah. Ah, ah. Why? Ah. No. Yoko. Yoko. Is there actually something behind me? Because, uh. The screen's shaking like there's someone behind me, but. I don't. I don't see neither eye, hair, or tail. I don't know what you're freaking out about. There's nobody there. But it did feel like someone was watching me. I always feel like somebody's watching me. Hmm. Okay, that's it for the, for the talking, I guess. Someone's got Yoko really rattled. Yeah, I know that. What, do I talk to her again? It's no use. She's in no condition to talk. Okay, so what? There's something else I can see? Yoko's pointing over here, but I don't see anything out of the ordinary. That push. No, no, no. Still, she looks really spooked. Now she's making this up. Damn it! Did I miss it? You okay? There has to be something strange around here. I should keep looking. Seriously? Okay. I mean... I don't really see anything. Unless now? Uh... I don't see anything I should be frightened of. Bro, that thing again. Maybe there's something there that I can't see? Something that you can't see. I don't know, man. I don't, I don't see anything. What the hell am I supposed to be looking for? Or does it actually want me to push the button? No way! It wants me to push the button? Nah. Really? have to? Nah. Nah. I thought I had a choice. Oh, shit. Man. I... Man. Oh my god. I do... Oh my... I can't believe it's actually giving me no choice but to push the button. Alright, here we go, boys. I don't get this. What's going on? Did something happen? Yoko? Oh, shit. What is it? Why is this happening? So go okay 1 a.m. Still Kinshibori Park. Yoko, answer me. Yoko? No, no way. It can't be! Why? Why? No! Oh, okay. Ah! What the hell just happened? No, damn it, I've got bigger problems! Y Yoko? Just hold on! Everything's gonna be okay! Oh god, she's not breathing. She's cold! I don't feel a pulse. This can't be happening. Okay, okay, okay. An ambulance. Right, I, I've got to call an ambulance. I need a phone. Yoko. Yoko. Whoa. Whoa. 
The phone. I need to call an ambulance. That phone. What's just happening? Call an ambulance. Ah, Yoko. Ah, is she dead? Ah. Right, the phone. I've got to call an ambulance. I called it in. The ambulance shouldn't be long. But... Is it going to make a difference? Her body's gone stiff. And her skin is cold. And I don't think she's breathing. She looks more like a mannequin than a person now. I don't think there's any coming back from that. I don't get it. Just a few minutes ago, we were chatting away without a care in the world. Yoko. How did this happen? How could someone so bright and bubbly just suddenly drop dead? Resurrect her. Huh? Oh, that's right! As that right of resurrection she was talking about really does exist. There might be a way to bring her back. If someone could just drop dead out of nowhere like... Like they were cursed. Then why shouldn't there be a way to bring them back to life? Yoko believed in it. So if I believe in her... It seems completely possible. Maybe... Just maybe... I could still save her. Even if I've got to deal with spirit senses and curses and whatever bullshit... I've got to try. Wait for me, Yoko. I promise. I'll use the Rite of Resurrection to bring you back. Right before she died, I felt a strange presence a few times. And it seemed like she saw something. Something that shook her to the bone. I see it. You motherfucker, you've been hiding, you bitch. There's definitely something strange going on. Maybe it's still here. What could she have seen? She mentioned that the Rite of Resurrection and seven, uh, uh, and seven Mysteries were connected. So maybe whatever it was she saw had something to do with that Whispering Canal. Whoa! They didn't give me that time. I don't know how. I was paying attention. Damn it. That presence again. It must be around here somewhere. But where? The cold night air feels like it's pressing down on me. Just standing here makes me want to scream. But I've got bigger problems right now. I've called an ambulance already. It should be here soon. Oh. Oh, of course. I don't know how it took me so long to realize. This has to be somewhere Frank she's praying. Any second now, she's gonna open her eyes, get up, and have a good laugh at how scared I was. Right, Yoko? You can give it up now. Boy, did I fall for that one! <laughs> you really got me good! <laughs> Wait, no, I've got it! You really were some sort of spirit all along. There's no way you're really dead. Right? I'm not even fooling myself anymore. There's no going back. Only forward. Oh, what's this? Huh? There's something on the ground. Oh, that's not ominous at all. You see the shadows? Did Yoko drop this? I didn't notice it till now. But there's a small wooden sculpture by her side. It's three or four centimeters tall. It looks like it could be a keychain, but from how rotted it is, it's way too old for that. Despite how tiny it is, I feel an almost palpable, palpable malice radiating from it. What the hell is this thing? Gurstone acquired the Whispering Canal. <sighs> what the? Help me, why leave me? It hurts. Drop dead. Are these the Whispering Canal's memories? Ugh! Such deep sorrow. 
resentful memories flowing into my mind. They turn their backs, they walk away, leave me behind, drop dead. Kill them. Kill them. Those who walk away. Kill them all. You have acquired the per the you have acquired the power of the curse stone, the whispering canal. You can use it to kill those who walk away from you. You press the use curse button to kill your target as soon as they attempt to depart. Ah! A murderous impulse seeps into my soul like thick black tar. Now, kill. Can you hear it, curse bearer? You, who so strongly desires the rights. Kill them. Should you seek life's restoration, take your curse in hand. Reap lives by the score. And claim their soul dregs for your own. Collect enough to sink this vessel. And by their sacrifice, claim the gift of resurrection. Or better yet, slay your fellow curse bearers. For theirs are the equals of droves of lesser souls. Now go forth and kill. The Whispering Canal. Formerly known as Kinshibori. Many fishermen, blah 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 blah. Oh! A curse power. Kills by drowning one who leaves the curse bear behind. It's not memory. Toki loved fishing with her father, Jinkichi, more than anything. With their wicker baskets on their backs, they would leave for the canal every morning and fish till the evening. The miso soup her mother, Koma, made using the carp they caught was to die for. Her parents loved her dear dearly. One day, however, her father disappeared. Toki's mother went to look for him and never came back either. Those who came to visit to express their concern eventually stopped visiting her out of fear. Toki continued to wait all alone. Mother? Father? Where did you go? Don't leave me behind. Unable to bear the loneliness, she left her home and trudged along the roads until night fell. Oh god, sorry. Neither her mother nor father were anywhere to be found. Tears stung her eyes. Suddenly, the sound of fish splashing in the water cut through the silence. She found herself standing before the canal where they used to fish together. The taste of carp and the memory of her father's smile flashed across her mind. Without thinking, Toki walked into the moat. The sound of water splashing echoed through the night air. Passerby thought of it only as the fish in the canal. The flat splashing faded, and silence returned to the lonely night. Oh, that's... Oh, man. No, no, I didn't hit... Oh, man, I meant A. Crap. Okay. Curse Echoes, Curse Bearer. Curse Echoes are the visual manifestation of curses. These manifestations are fundamentally related to the origin of the curse. They do not always take the same shape, and may sometimes appear in a more abstract or disfigured form. They lack, they, they, lack, they, lack, they lack consciousness, unlike a spirit, and are thus the mere dregs of a soul. Curses are made tangible by what are known as soul dregs. Someone possessed by a curse, that has a curse echo, is called a curse bearer. A curse echo is in itself a curse, and a possessed curse bearer can inflict that curse upon others at will. A curse that comes with a curse echo is considered very powerful in and of itself. Ordinarily, those with no spirit sense would not be able to perceive a curse echo, but anyone who becomes a curse bearer can see other curse echoes. Curse, curse, curse. Curse stones. Old Netsuke carvings imbued with curses derived from the seven mysteries of Hanjo. Hanjo. Ordinarily, only those with spirit sense can wield such curses. But these cursed stones allow ordinary people to use them just as least. Oh my gosh. That's mine, the whispering tail. Whisper, whisper. Soul dregs. 
When someone dies, their life essence leaves the body and becomes a soul. If one is killed by means of certain curses, however, their life essence will turn into a resi residue known as soul dregs. The Rite of Resurrection essentially uses these soul dregs as a sacrificial offering to bring back the dead. But the amount of soul dregs required depends on the person being resurrected passed on when the person being resurrected passed away. The more time has passed since their passing, the more soul dregs are required. This is creepy. Oh, you're still there. Huh? What the hell was that? It's like the curse's memories flow directly into my mind. In an instant, I understood everything. When I picked up the curse stone, the whispering canal must have cursed me. I also heard a strange voice. It told me that if I want the right, I have to kill a bunch of people with this cursed stone and collect their stones. I guess it's good to know that the right really exists. But this thing wants me to kill people to get it? Screw that. Putting my own life on the line is one thing. Murdering other people is another thing entirely. And not just one person either. Scores, it said. So this is the curse of the Whispering Canal, huh? A curse that traps the soul of anyone who tries to walk away from me. But if I use it and collect enough souls, then I'll be able to bring Yoko back. Yeah, the girl that you barely know. Granny, do you even know how she died? I don't know how she died either. It was weird. There was something about other curse bearers being worth more soul dread. Jeez. I'm really at a loss here. Where's my flaws? I'm at a loss without my flaws. Hmm? It feels like I'm being watched. Is someone there? Where are you? Aha! Hello. Huh? Oh, I saw that. Now that I look closer, is there someone there? They must be ignoring me on purpose. Maybe they're waiting to see what I do. Ah, there it is! Huh? What the hell is that? It looks like a light floating in midair. Huh? It's gonna come closer, I think. Well, let's call out. Hey, who's there? Oh my. How unexpected. It was your curse that killed that poor woman. I take it. What? Can't get your tongue, Mr. Oki. Huh? Oh god, it's closer. Yeah, it's closer. Whoa, it's coming closer. Is this another one of the seven mysteries? It looks like a will o -Wisp, maybe? Is there anything like that in the seven mysteries? What the fuck is it getting closer? It's creeping me out, but it's probably... But it's staying put for now. I should probably leave it be. Okay. A tall, humorless looking man. He doesn't look familiar to me. He's acting like he knows me, though. Have we met somewhere before? Is it... Oh no, it's still there. Okay. Who are you? And how do you know my name? Do you mean to say you don't recognize me? This comes as a bit of a shock, I must say. Look a little harder, and I dare say it will jog your memory. Oh, I wonder if I should... Should I give him the... Well, I don't even know if I do a really good shadow. What's with this guy? Oh, okay, you stay there. Look a little deeper. Hmm. That man. Who is he? He looks to be in his 30s or 40s. He's all dressed up in a suit and tie. No, 
Cause I had my suit and tie. I'm gonna live it up on the floor tonight. I'm just I don't know. I'll show you a few things. Uh, he's all dressed up in a suit. Yep, but somehow he looks real shady. What's he doing here? Was he watching us all this time? Something tells me curses are nothing new to him. If he's one of the other curse bearers, then I need to be careful. He might be here to tear. Uh, yeah. He might be here to kill me and take my curse stone. But by the same token, killing him will net me a lot of soul tricks. Mm -hmm. How we doing, Will O' Wisp? Okay, you're still there. Okay, cool. Just making sure. Mm. I still don't have a clue who you are. How do you know me? Have we met? Dear me, it is always humbling to find that one is not as well known as one believes. Perhaps my name will help you remember. I am Takumi Yumioka. Takumi Yumioka. Takumi Yumioka? Does that ring any bells? I think I've heard that name somewhere before. Maybe. So, you do not even know my name. Apparently, the airplanes can still be picked up on my mic. So that's nice. That's lovely. I love that. Anyway. So, you do not even know my name. How disappointing. Disappointing. But for two it is. Takumi Yumioka. Mr. Stranger. Takumi Yumioka. The man who was covertly watching Shoko Okie at Kinshibori Park. Well then, Mr. Okie, allow me to make you a proposition. You have a cursed stone in your possession. I would like you to give it to me. How do you know? How do you know about that? Why, I saw the whole thing. That doesn't explain how you know what a curse stone is. Even I barely have a handle on it. You know about the seven mysteries of Hanjo and their curses and all that, don't you? But of course. Oh, excuse me, sorry. Those curse stones. They are terribly dangerous things, capable of killing without a trace, so long as their conditions are met. I hadn't thought of it that way, but yeah. Nah, I, I can't do that voice. I'll just go back to the other one. Imagine what might happen if one fell into the wrong hands. They would be safer in mind. Don't you agree? Although it seems I arrived too late to stop you from killing that poor woman. What are you- That wasn't me! I am willing to overlook your indiscretion. But only if you give me your curse stone. No way in hell! For all I know, the wrong hands are yours! Very well. I had hoped to settle this amicably. But you leave me no choice. This Takumi guy must have a crystal of his own. I don't know about that. There's no way he has a crystal of his own. If he did, he wouldn't be so eager to get his hands on mine. He was one of his own. They're that powerful and that dangerous. By the sounds of it, if I give him the chance, he'll try to take my curse stone by force. I have to keep him talking and figure out a way to get my curse out first. How can I get him to leave me behind? Though, it would be a waste not to take this chance to find out about the other curse bearers. Oh, is it? Oh, okay, still chilling. Weird. Oh, hold on. Gotta move the car. Okay, well, I don't need to move the car anymore because my dad moved it, so. Go. Takumi Yumioka, he said his name was. He hasn't taken his eyes off me for a second. Even now, he's still staring right at me. What? Do you want my number or something? I got some on my face? Hmm? Oh, right, he wants to... He wants to... Curse stone, right. Who the hell 
hell is he? Maybe if I focus, I can recall something useful. Okay, well, let's recall. Takumi Yum Yumioka. How the hell does he know me? It's not like I've been getting out much. I barely have a life outside of work. If I want to use my curse on him, I have to get him to walk away and leave me behind. Now, what would convince him to do that? Scenario 1, he does what he need, came here to do. Scenario 2, he suddenly needs to be somewhere else. He's probably here for my curse stone, so I don't think I'd get out of Scenario 1 alive. Scenario 2 means hoping something will happen by chance, and luck is rarely on my side. So my, my only hope is Scenario 3. Something makes it impossible for him to stay. I don't have to keep him away forever. I just need him to walk away once. Well, I recalled, but he didn't do anything, so let's talk. I need to talk him topic that'll keep him talking. My best bet would be... Before I give you my curse stone, I want to know who you are. I need to know if I can trust you. A reasonable enough concern. Very well. I am an associate of the great sorcerer, Suiken Gamyodo. Suiken Gamyodo? Indeed. You must have heard of him. I believe he was recently featured in a certain magazine. Your unfortunate companion there came seeking his counsel. Not a few days ago. It was from her that I learned your name. I thought she would have mentioned me to you. But it seems that was presumptuous of me. And when did this happen? Why, just two or three days ago. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't believe that shit. Yeah, I'm not buying that. He knows I don't know who he is. He's just trying to feed me a story. I've only known Yoko for a month. But she never mentioned going to see some psych, some mystic. Although this is Yoko we're talking about here. So it is hard to say for sure. Plus, it's not like she's going to tell you every single thing anyway. She only just told you about the Rite of Resurrection stuff today, in the Seven Mysteries of Honjo. Well, technically nine. Myster well, technically fifteen. Y you know, the multiple mysteries of Honjo. Ow, ow, oh shit. That's gonna bleed. Oh, it's already bleeding, nice. Well, I'll do so. I hope that is enough to convince you that my hands are more than trustworthy. Let me redo that. I hope that is enough to convince you that my hands are more than trustworthy. No. Wait, that's it! My work! That's how he knows me. I've never actually met him, so it totally slipped my mind. The man who was covertly watching Shongo Okie at Kinishib Kinshibori Park. Takumi is the secretary to the chairwoman of Hihaku Soaps, a chemicals company headquartered in Sumida City. Takumi worships the company chairwoman, Natsue Yamamori, and demonstrates his unwavering loyalty through his swift and exact execution of every task given to him. Just as Natsue Yamamori continues to exert tremendous influence over the company since her retirement from the presidency, so too does Takumi continue to support her behind the scenes. Acting as Natsue's mouthpiece in this capacity has earned him the ire of the current president and the board of directors. Takumi knows the names and faces of not only of not only all employees at the head office, but also the temporary workers and their factories and warehouses, and even their main, main suppliers. How do you even how? How? That's insane. So he can gum yolo my ass. This guy thinks he can sell me anything. What is he, a snake oil salesman? I don't know if having figured that out helps me much right now. He works at Hihaku Soaps, just like me. He's a secretary to the chairwoman, Natsue Yamamori. No wonder I didn't recognize him. He's way above us lowly peons. I've only ever seen him in the company bulletins. But he knew who I was. Could he have memorized the names and faces of everyone in the company? Sounds like Freak! Swigen Gamiyoro, my ass! I know who you are. You work at Hihaku Soap just like me. You're the chairwoman's secretary. Well, that took you long enough. Your lack of company loyalty is frankly astounding. 
As if I would be able to recognize everybody's name and face, bro. Allow me to reiterate my request then. Not as a stranger, but as your superior. Hey, we're not at the office. You don't get to push me around like that. Why is our chairwoman's secretary even out looking for curse stones anyway? I refrained from revealing myself precisely to avoid such questions, but I suppose needs must. Since the dawn of the Showa era, the land of Honjo has nurtured our company's growth, and vice versa. It is our duty to ensure that curses do not take root in this land we know as our home. Now, I'm not sure I buy that. Like many things, it is not a matter that concerns the rank and file. Okay, alright. Shut your dumb ass up. The chairwoman has no desire to spread fear through our beloved company's birthplace. Now, if that is all, I must insist that you hand me your crystal. No. No, fuck no. What? Who is you? How does it? Anyway, about Yoko. How do I know it wasn't you who killed Yoko with your curse? Mr. Okie, if you are hoping to trick me into revealing whether I possess a curse stone, I assure you, you cannot. It is your curse that was responsible, Mr. Okie. No matter how you, no matter what you might tell yourself. That doesn't make sense. I only found this after Yoko died. Oh. Don't play dumb. I know you're the one who did this. Whether you choose to believe me is your prerogative, but you are mistaken. But you should know that multiple curses awaken at once at the stroke of midnight. There are many other curses in Honjo, and many other curse bearers. It is, is it not premature of you to assume that I am the one responsible? No, because you're here, buddy. Wait, so you're saying that at midnight, a bunch of people became curse bearers? There's no point in continuing this conversation. Well, I know he could be telling me anything. Why are you so convinced it was my curse that killed Yoko? Why, it is simply that. Huh? Huh? I do believe I just saw your companion move. She what? Bullshit, I'm not falling for that. What are you doing? Should you not check on her? I'm not falling for that shit. What do you want with my curse? Why do you want my curse stone? Oh, what do you want on my curse stone anyway? I intend to seal it away in a secure location, so it may never be used again. I am certain that you, too, would rather be free of this burden. The power to kill without fear of consequence is, in itself, a curse. There are many ne'er-do-wells in this world who could not resist the urge to use it. All the more so if promised a chance to resurrect the dead. You'll steal it away? How? I will put it in the care of a sorcerer who is well versed in supernatural matters. If I have gained your trust, I must ask you to hand me your curse stone. You haven't done shit, buddy. For each of the seven mysteries, there's a curse and a curse bearer, right? Do you know who any of the others are? And what would you do with that information? That's for me to know, for you to never find out. Shut up. Your intentions are nothing untoward, I hope. Why do you care? Who are you to me right now? <gasps> it is in the hearts of the selfish and insipid of those who would be the most tempted by the right of resurrection that the curses take root. Let's take root in anybody, buddy. Anyone who touches it. Ow! That's, that is actually hurting a lot. Wow. Crazy how it hurts, but it's not bleeding anymore. But damn it, man, I just hate having loose pieces of skin. It's like on your fingers. Excuse me. It's almost like a hangnail, but you just want to peel it off because any one little touch, and it, you feel like a tinge of pain. Every sucks. So I just had to peel it off. Now it hurts like a bitch. And the, and the curse is resentful memories impart a powerful urge to kill, as I am certain you are aware. 
You are a victim of circumstance, Mr. Okie. Okie. But your situation is exceedingly dangerous. You must relinquish your curse stone for your own benefit before it is too late. Too late? Oh god! It's already too late! There's no going back! All I can do is keep pressing forward! And if you're going to stand in my way, then I'll have to stop you! Am I to take that as a threat, Mr. Okie? I would encourage you to exercise more discretion before you fall foul of a curse. So what's up with that light? What's up with that weird ball of light? Is that your curse? Whatever do you mean? I'm afraid I see no such thing. Huh? But it's right- Oh, uh, it's gone! It was right there! What the f- I see. It seems you have become the mark of another curse bearer. Oh god. <gasps> so someone else is here. No, 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 no! I didn't know it would make me just look at her immediately, bro. Oh, I'm so pissed. Hey, Yoko! Wait. She doesn't look any... different? Ugh! No! Damn it! Oh! I'm actually mad about that. That was a stu- that that was- I- I'm so mad about the fuck! My, my beat. You seem to have arrived at a less than favorable result. This is mere conjecture on my part, but... Perhaps you ought to be more careful about turning your back on unscrupulous individuals. If you're not, you may make as many attempts as you please from before your unfortunate mishap. Man, fuck that mishap, bro. That was so garbage. I didn't even mean to do that shit. Very well. Just remember, whatever you do, do not turn around. Yeah, I know this! It's, ah! Fuck. Fuck you. I don't have to keep him wait. There it is. Wait, I've got it! I know how I can convince him to leave. Alright, look, I'm gonna save now. Cause I actually like that that generally pisses me off. <laughs> that generally pisses me off. We still got the ambulance coming, right? Oh crap, I totally forgot. What is it? Oh right, I forgot to mention. I called an ambulance. It should be coming any minute now. An ambulance. Have you lost your mind? They will arrive to find you standing next to a corpse, alone in the dead of night. No doubt they will hand you over to the police, who will have some questions for you. Probably, but I'm sticking with Yoko. Unless you want to join me in an interrogation room, you better get out of here. Hmm. You're telling the truth, I see. They are getting closer by the second. I cannot afford to be way late at this juncture. I fear I must take my leave. <gasps> Sooner or later, I will return for your curse stone. I only hope you do not abuse it in the meantime. Well then, I bid you good evening. Oh! Oh! I didn't do that! Wow! Gah! Shogo, okay. You there? That's crazy. I didn't do that. He's dead. He's really dead. So, this is what a curse stone can do. Whoa. The curse of the Whispering Canal is getting 1% soul drag, so he wasn't a soul bearer. Shogo Okie.
2 a.m. That is still crazy that he did that without me doing anything. Ginshicho area. About to say ara ara. I don't know why. Awa, awa. I left the park immediately. I felt bad for leaving Yoko, but I couldn't stay there. The emergency medical services will probably take care of her body. Takamis too. This will be all over the news tomorrow. And until then, at least I know she'll be in a safe place. Alright. I have to find my next sacrifice quicker. That is a crazy sentence. I got no time to waste. I need to find the other curse bearers and collect their souls. Killing Takumi barely got me any soul drags. I guess he mustn't have been a curse bearer after all. It's not enough. The soul of a non curse bearer amounts to little more than leftover breadcrumbs. I have to think of places where the other curse bearers of the Seven Mysteries would be. The curses were activated at around midnight. The others are bound to be active still. I should check to see if there are other places with connections to the mysteries nearby. At the very least, another curse bearer might be thinking the same as me, meaning I can run into them. Let's see. Which of the seven mysteries are closest? I'm in the Kinshito area right now. The haunting clappers are on the other side of Oyoko River, just over Shumoku Bridge. The Fort Washing Mansion and the Ever Bearing Lantern are around South Warigese uh, Street, past the train track. And further along Oyoko River, I'll find the beckoning light at Oonji Bridge. Those three places are the closest. I guess I should start there. Well, actually, I think we'll stop for now. Because I really did want to keep going, but my... My, uh... My voice is going, even with... My vocal cords are hurting, pretty much, you know. I'm trying to pause. I'm not trying to say something sus, but yeah. I thought I could keep going, but... I gotta get back in my bag for recording this stuff so my voice can actually be used to making these voices and recording for a while. Because it's been a minute since I've done this, so. Thank you guys for watching part one. If you enjoyed, let me know down in the comments. Um, I really didn't want to see that death. I really tried to avoid it. I tried to look around just in case something else would happen. Maybe I'd see the, um, maybe I'd see the Will-O-Wisp, like, in another area, maybe right behind me. But no, when I looked down there... He just so happened to hone on Yoko. And at that point, it was already death for me. It was up. It was up for me, bro. Takumi decided it's time to crash out. And I was just like, bruh. That's bullshit. That's why I got mad. But anyways. Like I said, thank you all for watching. I'm really, really, really enjoying this game. It's got that right amount of scare, but also kind of funny at times as well. And the art style is amazing. It keeps you on your toes, bro. It's like, it's that kind of scary where it's like psychological. I love the psychological thrill. It really messes with your mind. It's not like straight up horror and stuff like that. Even though I do like horror too, but I love psychological thrills. Those are the best kind of horror. So obviously the next one after this, I, I got another one that I have physically that we're going to play after this. And then I have ideas for others as well. That I'm trying to play, but also, you know, we got we got a lot of visual novels and stuff like that. So once again, I appreciate y'all for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. Have a great day. Bye.